Boom! Welcome back to the Seb Show. It's your fucking boy, Sebs. You already know what it is. Missed um, the tough finale, tough 25, tough redemption uh, picks video. I was going to do it yesterday. Actually got sent to the hospital early morning last night. Uh, was vomiting blood and whatnot. Not a good night for uh, Sebs over here. But a good betting night. Well, at any time it's a plus night on betting, it's a good night. I went a uh, plus 1.69. We'll do a quick betting recap on um, on the Tough 25 finale. Obviously, the fight I got to talk about right away is Justin Gaethje versus uh, Michael Johnson. Fucking amazing fight. Um, only went two rounds, but still fight of the year uh, in my book so far. Gaethje's the real deal. Whole reason I had five point what two five units on or five point seven five units on him or something like that. Um, I had him straight up four point two five units to win point uh, four point three five units, and then I had him um, uh, one point seven units in decision inside sorry inside the distance uh, to win two point nine seven units. So Gaethje did come up pretty big for me. Another uh, big win yesterday was the boys from the Tough House, Tough 25, um, Jesse, JT Money Taylor. Uh, I had a lot of faith in this guy throughout the whole show. Um, as soon as I saw him wrestle, man, I thought this guy was going to be the one to win. It was him or Krause, I thought, in the finals for sure. And Jesse did. As soon as I saw what Jesse did to Krause on uh, Wednesday was just waiting for these lines to pop the fuck out. I should have maxed bet this. It was a little bit scary just because Diego Lima does have fast fucking hands. And you guys saw in the second round, he put Taylor on his ass. But Jesse Taylor grinded him, I think, got a 10-8 that first round. And then James Krause completely uh, picked apart Tom Galicchio. And I really like Toothless Tom. I'm not sure he's UFC caliber ready yet. Um, doesn't take the best shots. You know, um, uh, eats a lot of punches and care, eats, he eats a lot of fucking shots. He's a tough, durable guy. I'll give him that. Really, really, uh, slick at taking the back. And once he gets your back, you're in big trouble. But fuck, that's all he knows how to do, man. Got, you gotta get moving around. If, uh, gotta know how to throw some combos and stuff. I think if he goes to a, a, a pretty good camp, they can sharpen up some of the skills. Um, whenever you can take somebody's back like that in the first round, and, and the punishment that guy takes in the first and second round, and is always able, like, uh, during the Tough Redemption show, uh, I think it was like, uh, Seth Pachinski, he showed him, uh, that was the number one pick, and showed him real quick, you know, I'll, I'll take your back, I'll tap you out. He takes a beating from people in that first round, like, uh, Brian Sam was saying. Comes back and he fucking, uh, he, he'll tap you out in the second. So that was another win for me. Um, the losses on the night were, uh, Dia Casey and, uh, Ishihara both had them parlayed with, uh, I had a three unit parlay with Jordan Johnson and Ishihara and then a four and a half unit parlay with Dia Casey and Jordan Johnson. It was pretty high on both those guys. Uh, Taruto I thought was going to step up his wrestling game a lot. I thought he, he was going to be the superb technical striker. Uh, his left cross is deadly. I thought I was going to put Gray Maynard to sleep. I even took him inside the distance and, uh, on like a point three unit part of lay. Um but um uh, Dia Casey I thought it was, it looked like um close or close wasn't uh wasn't playing the games of uh D Casey. That's what led him to the victory. Uh, no need to break the rest of this down. Go watch that Justin Gaethje versus Michael Johnson fight. Honestly, fucking amazing. The whole reason this kid's 18. No, you gotta watch. He's honestly my favorite MMA fighter right now. I've never seen anybody like him. The most entertaining MMA fighter by far. Knows he's gonna get knocked out at one point. He just doesn't give a fuck when. He loves to throw hands, man, and lay kicks. His lay kicks are so vicious. Something I had, I had a half a page, like, essay written on, on, like, uh, you guys know how I like to go in-depth into my breakdowns and whatnot. The Gaethje fucking breakdown was gonna take 30 minutes, at least. Uh, all the shit I had on Gaethje, I was very confident in Gaethje. Very confident in Gaethje. And when I saw that line growing to 245, I was like, fuck, man, people are gonna be making some cash. Uh, I knew he was gonna get it done inside the distance, too. 
Um, I've seen Michael Johnson on skates before, never knocked out. But Michael Johnson did put him on skates, but fuck all this shit. Let's jump up to uh, UFC 213. It's uh, in exactly six hours. I'm taping at 1.22 p.m. Eastern Time, so it's in about six hours and eight minutes. Uh, this will be out probably around 2.30, so I'll only get four hours of views, but still hoping for like a nice hundred views or something, guys, so let's try and get that. Um, quick shout out before we do anything, I want to give a shout out to my boy Rockstar Z, MMA God, uh, Dan Tom, the MMA analyst and the Protect Your Neck podcast, he's awesome, he's a truly, truly gifted individual at what he does, uh, MMA Kelton, um, Pretty sure he hasn't announced it yet, so I'm not going to announce anything, but got some, something in the works with MMA Kelton. And, uh, shout out to, uh, UFC Bro Picks, of course, uh, Justin and Ricky, and then, uh, Half the Battle with Dan Levy. But, uh, furthermore, let's get into, uh, this, no, no further questions, man, let's fucking jump into UFC 213. Very stoked about this card. Love this card from a bang perspective, as I usually do. A lot of people saying UFC 213 might not be the best betting card. I see it as one of the best. You, I like 214 for betting purposes. Um, but this card is... It's not bad. It's not bad. I like it a lot. Um, maybe it would be a little bit better if uh, that Cowboy Lawler fight didn't get off. Obviously would be better. But uh, nevertheless, I think it's still a great card. Um, so let's break it down quick. Um, Trevin Giles versus James Bonkonvich. Um, didn't do a whole lot of tape on these guys. These were uh, the last fights like entered late, late uh, last week. Or late, was it late last week or sorry, late this week. They came in on, I'm not sure when they came in. They weren't as late as the... The tough redemption finalist, uh, the finalist fucking lines, but the finalist lines. I said finalist. What a fucking idiot! Eh? But these did come out a little bit early. Didn't do a whole lot of tape. The only thing I know about Bonkonovich is this guy comes out of uh, tra- he trains Ben Rothwell and all those guys there. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's at Alliance. Um. Don't know a whole lot about Trevin Giles. I'm not going to shit talk my way through this one, guys. I'm, let's just go with Blankonovich. Not confident at all. I'm honestly picking Blankonovich because of shout out to Will Martin MMA. Uh, he's pretty high on this kid from what I saw in his uh, video. Then say it in his video in his comments. If you read quick, he'll, he'll tell you he likes Blankonovich in this fight quite a bit. And I did see a couple of my boys take that one unit shot, half a shot on him. So I'll take him. Why not? Um... Next fight is a fight more confident in Co- Cody Stamman and Tyrion Wearing. Cody Stamman is the number one uh, featherweight, I believe, in the the Northeast or something. He's from Michigan, and then he's the number two bantamweight. I think this is at 145. Yep, 145. Tyrion Wills a natural uh, bantamweight, so uh, he's going to be a little bit smaller than Cody. Cody's a fucking animal. Uh, knockout power. Good wrestling, good submission skills, all-around athlete. Uh, it was a matter of time till this guy got into the UFC. Now that he's in here, I'm expecting him to make uh, not a huge, maybe a huge splash in his first UFC uh, debut. But uh, we'll see how far he can jump up this ladder. But I do have him in a total, I believe, of... Let's just get this shit straight. Um, yeah, I have him in four... Yeah, four and a half units completely. So I have a three unit parlay with him and somebody later in the card. And then I got a one and a half unit parlay with uh, Cody and somebody later in the card. Pretty fucking, uh, pretty confident on Cody here to beat uh, Tyrion Ware. Though uh, I think he's just a bigger fighter, the better fighter overall. Gets it done. Honestly, flying through these fights today, guys. Not, not a whole lot of time. Didn't break these down like I usually have the time to. I think I only got like the co-main and a main event done for that, and I think a little bit on like Curtis Blades. But other than that, 
let's just fly through these cards. Rob Font, Douglas Silva de Andrade, uh, De Silva fucking passed me his last fight. Look at him, he's just a fucking bull for 135. Going against a tough Rob Font here. This is going to be a tough fight, I think. Um, if Silva does gas, Rob Font takes advantage of him. Uh, can land that submission. Very good striking Rob Font has. But, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go with Douglas De Silva for a huge upset here. I have no shot on him whatsoever. Feel free to disagree. Rob Font's amazing. I know that. Um... De Silva looks intimidating as fuck, man. Looks like he'll knock you out in one punch. You saw the needs to definitely get on this boy. But, uh, yeah, my picks, uh, Doug De Silva will go first round knockout. Cody Stanman will go, uh, second round submission. And Bokanovic will go second round, or will go decision, whatever. To, uh, the prelims we go to, Jordan Mean versus Bilal Muhammad. Um... I was super high on Jordan Mean for a really long time, man. Uh, only, I think he's like 27 years old. But this kid's been through fucking wars, man. Fucking wars. Like, there's, there's a time in his life where he didn't want to fight anymore. And then he came back and he wanted to fight again. Uh, pretty much against that. Um, when he got the call to fight in Toronto, I saw him live. I had him... I, I had him on some, some nice parlays. I remember he was a nice parlay piece for me. I thought he was actually going to uh, really pick apart Emil Weber Meek or whatever the fuck his name is. That crazy steroided bastard. That guy was juiced to the gills for sure. Uh, beat the fuck out of Jordan Mean on the floor. Pretty much held him down. Ground pound, ground pound, ground pound. I, I didn't even have to rewatch that one. But uh, even, even when they were standing up... Uh, Emil was landing the way harder shots. Didn't look like Jor Jordan Mean really wanted to be in there. But Law Muhammad hits fucking hard. Hit fucking hard. Remember the name, and he's not joking. Uh, had Bilal against Vincente Luque, where he got dropped real quick. Uh, I thought that was a good matchup for him, too. I thought he would actually do pretty well against Vincente, but you never know when those punches are going to come. I don't have a plan on, on Bilal, but I do like him in this fight quite a bit. Maybe uh second round knockout, third round knock. Yeah, third, maybe decision, honestly. Means a tough motherfucker. Yeah, I know he's a little bit older in fight years and whatnot. He's been through a lot of wars. He's a tough motherfucker, though. But I think this goes maybe to the third round when Mean gets a little bit gassed if he does. But I can see Mean winning this as well. He has dangerous elbows. He's dangerous, Motai. But I'm going to have to side with Bilal. Remember the name, Muhammad. And uh, third round TKO slash uh, knockout. Um, next, we have GM3 versus Thiago Santos. Uh, hard fight to call. Was originally originally going to take the shot on GM3, that one unit shot. He's at like plus uh, 137 right now, I think. He's at plus one. I sounded like a fucking rapist probably again there. Yeah, I, when I was doing the yawns right there. But... He's a plus 137. Uh, and I like GM3 from Rufus Sport. He's got some pretty decent striking, good wrestling, good uh, fucking excellent on the ground. His submission skills are deadly. Uh, if, if this hits the mat, uh, Maret is going to sleep, man. Charles Santos is going to sleep. If this is standing up, GM3 is probably going to sleep. Charles Santos is going to knock him out. I am siding with GM3, though, to get this decision or the submission, uh, late second round submission for GM3. And, yeah, not super confident again, didn't take a shot on him, but let's jump to the next card. Uh, Chad Disciple the Priest versus Brian Camozzi. Uh, Chad the Priest, another Canadian. I'm uh, pretty sure I did see him on that 206 card as well, where I think he fought Guti. Uh, he missed weight quite substantially in that fight, but um, he's fighting a guy against Brian Camozzi who got See a lot of people are, are low on Randy Brown and I'm not as low. I think the kid definitely has some fucking potential and uh, He he knocked out our TKO reverie Brian Camozzi Child the priest hits hard man And he's a really good wrestler too if this stays standing, Charlie Priest is going to probably knock him the fuck out. 
And if it hits the floor, child of priest is got this too. I just don't know which way this is ending, to be honest. But we'll go second round knockout, child of priest. Um, not super confident again, and like maybe the decision. Pretty confident in taking child of priest. They didn't take the shot on him. He, he was like a minus eight hundred or something, minus nine hundred. Uh, when I got to him, it was, yeah, he's paying like one dollar and ten cents. I go by the decimal. I just try and convert it for you, motherfuckers who do money line. But um, let's jump to our next fight, which is uh, Travis Brown versus Alexei Linux. Now, Linux fucking sixty-two fights deep. He's getting up there in age. He's a real good grappler. I'll give him that. He's a fucking good grappler. And that Ezekiel choke he threw on, uh, what was it, Pesta? I think it was Pesta that he, that he got that Ezekiel choke on. That shit was ridiculous. Guys, if you do not train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that choke is already hard enough to apply with a gi on. When you're wearing the gi, it's a, it's a collar choke. It's a blood pressure collar choke. So that... You, the collar uh, stops one side of the, the neck, blood pressure, and um, the other collar stops the other side. This motherfucker did it on the back of his, uh, the guy's like shoulders. Super, you, the amount of strength you have to have, especially getting that from bottom mount is incredible. Probably the best submission I saw all year next to Mackenzie Dern. Unless this was uh, this year, I don't even remember how early this was. But Kenzie Dern had a pretty dangerous submission, though. I think it was last year. That uh, Coco Plot and rear naked chokehold shit. But uh, I did take the three unit shot, nevertheless. On my boy Travis Hoppa Brown, I think he fucking gets out this slump. At one point, he was an overrated. Heavyweight people are saying this guy's the next heavyweight world champion and he may as well could have been he was training with Dom Cruz and all those guys that aligned and his footwork was fucking tremendous started dating Rousey boom went to Glendale Edmund fucked this guy up. I thought man didn't get the right training with Edmund Fo Edmund was focusedly focused uh, primarily on his boxing obviously that's what Edmund does but Travis is one of the nasty Muay Thai practitioners and kickboxers in the heavyweight division. His reach is incredible. He, the his leg reach, his leg reach is just to behold. It says 45 inches here, but man, does it look different? This motherfucker looks like can kick you from the other side of the cage. He his striking is so precise, and he is a very good striker. He, um, I thought. He he could have finished the fight against Derek Lewis. He was throwing those heavy body shots, uh, heavy body kicks at him. Almost knocked him the fuck out. Had him hurt against the cage. And then just didn't swarm him in. And then ended up getting finished by Derek Lewis. So, like, he didn't have that killer instinct there or he was scared. But he did look better in that fight. And that was his first fight where I forgot he, where he was. He wasn't with Edmund on that one completely. I'm pretty sure he went to Jackson Wink or something like that. I know he, he, he traveled a bit for that camp. But he looked better. Um, not sure exactly where he is with this camp. But to be honest, I think the age is going to catch up with Alexei here. I think Travis Brown's the more athletic striker. The better striker. And he's his anti-wrestling's top quality. With those devastating elbows, uh, he he can keep the shit standing, and if it's standing, he picks up uh, he picks apart Olenek and he fucking knocks him out in the first, if not the first, the second round, probably the second round. Um, but I I do favor Travis Brown quite a lot here. Got him in a three unit parlay with. Uh, let me just make sure I'm saying the right guy here. I do have. Yep, I only have him in... Oh, sorry, I have him in uh, three-unit parlay, and then I have him in one of my shits and hits parlays. The, what is it, the seven-plate parlay, or whatever. Yeah, seven plays, uh, straight up for him to win. 0.25 units on that. Um, but yeah, favoriting Travis Brown quite a bit here. And that leads us to our main card, finally, guys. And it, it starts off with Anthony Showtime Pettis versus Jim Miller. Anthony Pettis, 
making his lightweight, um, coming back to lightweight. Didn't think featherweight was the right move for him. I thought he just faced three fucking killers in those annuals, Barboza and Eddie Alvarez. Those are three killers. Those are three fucking killers. When you face those guys, it's it's either a win winner. You know what I mean? It's it's either gonna win or you're gonna lose, just like in every fight. But those are killers. Those are guys that are gonna be at the top of their division for a very long fucking time. And him dropping to 145 and depleting his body of all the the crazy shit Showtime does, he could, uh, uh, to uh, to the point where he can't even make 145. He looked terrible against Charles Oliveira. And then for him to jump 145 in an interim title fight, I should have known better not to bet him. I bet him. And he bit me in the ass. He's paying large, so I think he's like plus 225 or something like that. Regardless, regardless, he should have never went to 145. 155 is where this kid belongs, and he's going to make an impact again tonight. Um, Showtime needs to show what Showtime does best. Jim Miller is a good boxer and an amazing wrestler. We'll give him that. Not as athletic as Pettis. Not uh, flashy like Pettis, obviously. Not as diverse as him on the ground. Not can, can't submit people from his guard, I'm pretty sure. Like Pettis, like Pettis is very, very fucking active bottom, bottom guard, uh, as you saw against Benson Henderson, who's an amazing grappler. He tapped him out. The, an arm bar from the guard um, with that showtime kick you know the shit this guy can pull off is incredible he's been doing taekwondo since he was a baby his striking is on another level he is a very 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 technical striker and I see him picking apart and knocking out Jim Miller here in the first fucking round there I said it the first fucking round Pettis is back baby showtime let's get it and you know how I know Pettis is back? Because I got five motherfucking units on him. Max bet, baby. Five units on Pettis to win. 2.5 uh, one units or something like that. Let's double check what we got here. Uh, if I am correct, it's, it's something like that. But we do have a max bet on Anthony Pettis at um, minus 199. Uh, I'm very, very fucking confident in Pettis here to get the job done against Jim Miller. Somebody, he asked this fight, he asked to fight Jim Miller. He asked to fight Jim Miller for his lightweight return. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much putting my chips in this basket because I have a lot of faith in Pettis that he knows he needs this fight more than fucking anyone. Um, it's him and, and Travis right now that are in this slump. And I think they're both getting out of it tonight, guys. Um, Pettis. Pettis against Miller. Man, like, Miller's good at his scrambles and his wrestling. He's going to take you down and stuff. But as Pettis stops those takedowns and just keeps him at bay with that, uh, the kicking distance and the, his, stri his beautiful striking distance, how he in moves inside, outside the pocket so fluidly. It's, it's, it's gorgeous to watch Pettis move and strike. And I think he gets it done. He... Uh, he can, uh, like, don't get me wrong, Jim Miller has the capabilities to grind this one out for a nasty split decision or something like that. But Pettis can end this fight from the first second to the fucking last second to win all three rounds in decision. You know, like, Pettis, Pettis is, uh, he has more ways to win. He's a better fighter, the more, the younger fighter, the more athletic fighter. The more on, I think more's on the line for Pettis. Uh, I'm very confident in Pettis in this one, guys. Five units max bet on Pettis here at minus 199. Um, next bet, we got Verdum and Overeem. I think I jumped over a bunch of fights. Yeah, and also, guys, I said I didn't have a play on that uh, Bilal Muhammad fight. I do. I have over one and a half rounds for Mean and Muhammad in that uh, .25 unit parlay. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. So we're in the main card. Alistair versus Fabrice Verdum. Was scared to take the shot on either of them to begin with. Um, Alistair against Mark Hunt. I thought that was an easier fight for him. And then against, uh, 
And then uh, Verdum coming off that loss or coming off that win against uh, Travis, I think was his last fight, and uh, was gonna fight Kane, and then Kane got hurt. So we got Verdum versus Overeem now. Now Overeem, if he keeps this at bay, and what he's been doing the past couple fights, just focusing on that counter striking. Really playing into that Jackson Wing kind of game. Doesn't engage in any kind of balls whatsoever. Really picks his shots really well. His knees to the body are fucking dangerous. Some of the heaviest body kicks I have ever seen laid down on a person. But Verdum can tap you out anywhere on the ground. So if this hits the ground, Al Alistair might be in a little bit of trouble. trouble. And Fabrice is looking way better fucking standing up. We saw that flying fucking sidekick to start against Travis Brown. This, he's dynamic. He's dynamic. Uh, even how old he is, he's dynamic. Um, I'm looking back and I'm just going to enjoy this one. I got the over one and a half rounds in the .25 unit parlay with all those fights later on. But uh, only .25 units on this one. Really going to try and enjoy this one uh, from a fan perspective more or less. Um, but yeah, let's go to our next three fights. Probably the fights we have the most money on these next three fights. So let's start off with Curtis Razor Blades. I went ahead and I threw 30, 60. I have 7.25 units in total on Blades. Just had to read that. So I got Blades and Brown, 3 units. Blades and Stammen, 3 units. And then, sorry, I have, uh, I didn't even say this. So I have Pettis, 5 units. And then I have uh, Stammen and Pettis, 1.5 units. Then I got Blades, 1 unit, with the over 2.5 rounds for Amanda Nunes, Shevchenko, and the over 1.5 rounds for Romero and Whitaker. And then I got blades inside the distance uh, in that .25 unit parlay with everybody. So I'm very confident in Curtis Blades. One of the few guys I did do um, my mini little breakdown on. Um, let's go to him quick. He's got good leg kicks, heavy hands, great movement for a big guy. He works with Dwayne Ludwig. So his movement's top quality. Can't wait to see it against a guy like this. And the way he... Um, he like times those uh he times his takedowns is unbelievable he has so much power in those takedowns and his movement for a big guy is unreal so he'll he sets up his takedowns very well with with combinations he's an excellent wrestler grappler extremely heavy talk game you're not getting this motherfucker off you strong takedowns huge for this division, and he's at a heavyweight, so he has a size advantage on pretty much everyone he's fighting. He's good at taking and riding the opponent's back, making the opponent really like fucking like uh, carry his weight. He's really good at that. Um, his only loss, he's six and one. His only loss is to Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou is a fucking killer. I'm telling you guys ahead of time, I'm taking Ngannou versus J JDS all day. Eh? That might be a max bet. If, if that line's not out of whack. But, just watch with this motherfucker. I know Adam Milstead's not the best, the best fighter to watch, I, like, uh, uh, what Amal Lanchuk's gonna do, but, uh, this is what Blades is gonna do to Amal Lanchuk, I think. If you go watch that Adam Milstead fight, he fucking manhandled Milstead, manhandled him, and told Milstead, like, he he tore his ACL or something, man. A r terrible injury. But he was manhandling him before that. R heavy, heavy shots this guy has. So I do have him in 7.25 units. Uh, we'll, we'll recap all the bets after I go through everything. But, um, yeah, very, very confident in Brown. I would say Pettis. You'll see, you guys, I'd say Pettis, Brown, and one more. Probably my most confident of the whole card. Pettis probably being... Uh, I don't know. All of these guys I'm very confident in. 
Like extremely confident. Let's get this. So uh, I got uh, Curtis Blades winning this one. TKO round one on Daniel Olenchuk. Uh Daniel Olenchuk just quit. He beat actually uh, Alexei Olenek. I think that was Olenek's last loss. Uh, got out outstruck by Timothy Johnson. I just think Curtis Razor Blades is way too much for him. Uh, seven one. Uh, he's knocked out all opponent, all seven opponents, TKO them. He's a fucking animal. Uh, don't expect the guy to stop here. Eight and one, I think he proves to. I think he knocks out Daniel in the first round. Then we go to Yoel, Soldier of God, Romero, versus Robert the Reaper Whitaker. Lots of different takes on this fight. Before pre-tape, I was leaning Whitaker. I was like, okay, Whitaker probably better cardio. It's going to go maybe five rounds. More technical striker. Uh, younger in age. Hmm. Then let's do some tape study. I did tape study. Boom! Oh! So, all this shit hit me. And it's crazy. I see the guys taking Whitaker and whatnot. But when I was watching this tape study, there's a lot of holes in Whitaker's game that I think Yoel can exploit. I'm not saying there's holes in Yoel's game that Whitaker can't exploit. But I think there's way more in Whitaker's game. And a lot of you guys aren't seeing that. I don't think his cardio is as good as you guys are saying it is. I've never seen him go five rounds once in my life. Have you? I've seen him go three. Never. I don't think he's ever been five. Maybe earlier in his career. He's main invented, I think, once, and that was against Brunson. And that went, what, one one round? So, it's not like uh, Whitaker, so cardio machine as well. Um, I have five units, pretty much, on fucking Yoel Romero, man. This is an Olympic caliber wrestler, silver medalist in Olympic wrestling, okay? He's going to constantly get Whitaker down. Uh, Jacques Ray got him down. And then got his back, and Whitaker got him off his back. Congratulations, I took Jacques Ray huge on that. I think I took four units or five, maybe max better Jacques there. Great on everyone who picked uh, Whitaker in that matchup. This is a completely different fight. Romero has the size advantage, has the athletic advantage, has the striking advantage, I think, when it comes to power and maybe not precision but like not like technical striking but like straight up fucking raw power raw like diversity in his strikes mix up his combos extremely well takedowns are so good he's a world-class wrestler uh literally unbelievable knockout power can knock you out with anything he throws um great top game Great top, great top game. He's a quick starter. Nice footwork, light on his feet. Good and diverse combos. Oh, he's got some explosive power, man. Sorry, guys, a little tired here. He's got some explosive power. Diverse strikes. Great ground and pound can knock you out with nearly anything. And people like to say gas is bad after two rounds. I agree, gas is, but not as much as people think. He's finished a lot of people in the third. I think like six of his finishes are in the third, so. Just saying. Um, he's a great defensive grappler. Very clever trips and takedowns. Times his takedowns very, very well. And he has power, his blast power leg, uh, blast power leg. His blast double is fucking powerful as fuck. This guy hits a, a strong, strong, very powerful blast double leg and takes your ass for a fucking ride across the octagon. And he's good at taking it back. He, in the third round, didn't look, he didn't look gassed before knocking out wide, man. He spent a little too much time maybe in his corner, but still was light on his feet, didn't look gassed, and then he threw a flying knee. So, Whitaker, like I said, lots of power in his hands. Just looked great at 185. He went the distance. With Hall, went the distance with Natal. Great conditioning. Not, not, sorry, not, I wouldn't say great conditioning, good conditioning. Tends to get into sloppy ball sometimes though. Got a sloppy ball with Brunson, got rocked during it, beautiful head kick against Jacques then follow up strength. He's a good boxer. Great boxer. Quick and powerful hands, great feints and fakes. 
good jiu-jitsu, great takedown defense, but he doesn't have Olympic uh, caliber takedown defense. He's got lots of power in his hands, and I think his best chance would be a, a counter strike on Romero. But I am so confident in Romero, man. Five units on Romero. Uh, 5.25 units, because I have Romero actually in that 0.25 unit parlay with Romero inside the distance. And then uh, on this fight itself, I think I have way more units, but I have the five unit straight, uh, five unit um, bet on Romero here. And then I got uh, the over rounds with uh, Curtis Blades and uh, Shevchenko. I'll just tell you guys ahead of time the over two and a half rounds with Shevchenko and Amanda Nunes. The over. And then, no, I didn't take the over rounds in this one. I took Romero inside the distance. And then, uh, yep, five units for Romero to win. So that is a total of 6.25 units on this fight. Um, 5.25 of those units on Yoel. So very, very confident. Yoel Romero, guys. And I think he gets the job done tonight. New middleweight champion. Fights Bisping and takes Bisping out. And then we get to our main event. Amanda the Linus Nunes versus Valentina Shevchenko. And I got three and a half units on the Linus. Um, let's start off with the Linus. Would we? Heaviest hands in the 135 division. 10 knockouts slash TKO. She's a great wrestler. Black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Good takedown defense. Great boxing. Crisp in the pocket. Good combos. Great on the floor. Heavy ground and pound. Um, according to the numbers, the more accurate striker, you guys see right there. More accurate striker, according to the numbers, lands more as well. Um, we're, we're very big and strong for the weight class. Uh, she likes to headhunt a lot, something I, I wish she would like to mix it up and go to the body a little bit more. But she does go headhunting, loves to pressure forward and push her opponent against the fence. One punch knockout power. Uh, she's, a, she's a super quick fast starter. Willing to eat a shot to return two. Great at scamble, scrambles. Great at scambles. Great at scrambles. Three submissions. Great takedown defense and clinch work. That makes the this fight standing. With the clinch work, I think the takedown will make it more standing. If she shows she's a stronger woman inside the clinch, which I think she will be. Um, took down Shevchenko in that first fight and heavy ground and pound from there. Probably her best round in the fight. Excellent grappler, world champ in Gia Nogi. Dominant on the ground, very fast strikes, heavy ground and pound, like I said. And in the first fight, she had a 10 8 in one of the, in, you know, one of those rounds. Was it the first or second round? Uh, Shevchenko, excellent Muay Thai, great sub skill. She tackled Julian Pena from the guard with an armbar. Uh, pretty tentative in the first round. So likes to fill you out. Not a quick starter. Needs uh, to fight at a certain pace to win rounds, which doesn't really uh, uh, help her in this factor where if she's already down two rounds and she needs to fight at a certain pace, she's going to need to win all three to, to win the fight. You know what I mean? So that's not something I liked when it, when I saw that. Um, she's she is a brilliant striker, very technical, strong in the clinch, great movement, good counter striker. Doesn't throw a lot of volume though, guys. And uh, I think Amanda Nunes does, and I think Amanda Nunes knocks this girl out in the fourth round. Vicious knockout too. Um, so I got Nunes three and a half units. Let's run through all the bets. Once again, guys, I got um, three and a half units on Amanda Nunes. Got max bet Yoel Romero. Max bet Anthony Pettis. Three units on uh, Travis Brown and Curtis Blades. Three units on uh, Curtis Blades and Cody Stammen. 1.5 units on Cody Stammen and Anthony Pettis. Um, one unit on Curtis Blades over two and a half rounds of Amanda Nunes and Shevchenko, and then the over one and a half rounds on Yoel Romero. Might throw another unit on that. I'm not sure. Probably not. And then uh, we got that. And then we got that huge parlay that uh, Romero inside the distance, 
over one and a half rounds for Amanda Nunes, Shevchenko over one and a half for Alistair Verdum, Blades Inside the Distance, Brown to win, and over one and a half for Bilal and Jordan Mean at like, I think that's at plus 2020 to like a crazy, crazy odds. I, I just threw a point two five, obviously, for my shits and hits. Um, but yeah, that's my breakdown of this. It's not a super long one, not like something an hour long, an hour, 20 minutes like I've been doing, but wanted to get this broken down at least three hours before the card so I can get some views on YouTube before this card comes out. But, uh, good luck to everyone. I hope you guys cash. Uh, good luck on everybody's bets. Let's fucking get it. Let's go, Yoel. Let's go Pettis, let's go Curtis Razor Blades, let's go Amanda Nunes, let's go what, Cody Stammen, let's go Travis Brown, and let's get it with these over rounds. Let's fucking go. It's your boy Sebs, you already know. Till next time, uh, we're in Scotland next Sunday, I believe, for um, Gunnar Nelson versus Ponzinibbio, and uh, Cavillo versus Calderwood, another good card I'm looking at. But, till next time, it's your boy Sebs. Peace out, motherfuckers.